This video is gonna be the first video in a series I'm making. Um, it is based on my uh, lectures, on my photo tours. And it's thought of as a reference for my, my clients, my uh, clients on my uh, photo tours, but also for anyone who is interested in learning the basics of photography. In this first video, I'm not gonna be talking about shooting or editing, just a few terms and initial camera settings, uh, like how you, how you need to set your camera for optimal, optimal uh, quality. Things like file format are really important things are uh, color space. You need, to, you need to understand color space and image size. Uh, how big do you want your image to be? But first, let's start off a little simple. Let's talk about time and date. Things that, well, you don't really think about until you need. For example, if your time and date is set wrong uh, in, your, in your camera, you, you, you're gonna have problems by, with searching for your files by date. But more so, uh, for example, when I'm shooting an event or a wedding or something and I have two free cameras, which is not uncommon, the time and date needs to be set the same in each camera, it has just to be set correctly. Otherwise, I, 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 I can, I, it can be a nightmare to edit because you want to see all the event, all, 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 all the, uh, the party or the event. You want to see it in order, you know, from, from beginning to start. If one camera is uh, from beginning to start, then there's another camera. This, is, this can be really difficult. If you set the time and date correctly, this is, not, this is going to be non-issue. It's a small thing. But it, can, but it can save you a lot of time. Another very basic thing is to always format your card in camera. Don't format it in the computer and then put it in the camera. Format it in the camera you're gonna use it in. It's really important. Uh, and and, and even when you, when you empty your card in the computer, you, will, you put it back in, in the camera, reformat it to get rid of all junk that might be on your on your uh, card and uh, increases the possibilities of something going wrong so always format your card in the camera you're going to use it in and now for image size um, this depends a little bit on which camera you're using my current landscape camera is the 5d mark IV which is about 30 megapixels. Um, I always go for maximum size, which is 6720 by 4480. However, you can get like a 150 uh, megapixel camera. And I would say, I would argue that in some cases, you don't need all that data. But I will also say this, if you have a $60,000 camera body to shoot with, I suspect you know what you want in size. For me, with my normal DSLRs or even mirrorless cameras, I will always go for, especially landscape, I will always go for maximum file size. Uh, you never know if you want to print something big and it enables you to crop in uh, really tight and still get a decent uh, size print if you need to crop in big. With image format, I would always say shoot RAW, not JPEG. And here's why. JPEG files are compressed pixel files that have very limited dynamic range and little room to push in edit. But raw files are raw data, which allow for much more manipulations and they are non-destructive. There are some scenarios where I would use JPEG, 
mostly if I needed to send the photo immediately for photojournalists or something like that, or if I need more speed, uh, need a faster shutter speed, need to be able to shoot more frames per second. But for most people, this will never be an issue. Some people say, uh, well, I don't know how to edit real well. I just want to use the image straight from camera. And uh, then JPEG is a better option. This is fair. This is, this is not wrong. But do yourself this favor. In most cameras, you can do both. You can, you can choose to shoot RAW and JPEG. Choose that. Because you never know uh, if you decide to learn to edit some, someday and then it's really good to have the raw files somewhere. It's, you know, storage is cheap, you know, you just keep it on, uh, on an external hard drive until you feel the need to use it. And when you do, you're gonna see a massive improvement on your files, on your photos. Color space uh, is a little more complicated issue. Not a lot, just a little. Uh, most camera you can choose between uh, shooting sRGB or Adobe Arts RGB. Which should you choose and why? First of all, if you're shooting RAW, this really doesn't matter. There is no color space assigned to a RAW file. There's just RAW data. But even so, you really need to understand this if you want to use your photos for anything else than just shoot it. It is a common misunderstanding that Adobe RGB has more colors than sRGB. And to confuse things even more, there is this third color space called Pro Photo RGB, and that's even larger than Adobe RGB. But actually, all these three color spaces, they have exactly the same number of colors. RGB stands for red, green and blue. And every color has a value from 0 to 255, which gives it 256 colors, counting the zero. So, 256 times 256 times 256 is 16,700,000 colors is. So, Pro Photo RGB, Adobe RGB, and sRGB have equal amounts of hues, but Adobe RGB has a bigger color space than sRGB, which means they simply have more saturated tints, shades, and tones. So the photo can look more vibrant and it can be pushed more in editing. So really, you know, it kind of looks like it has more colors to work with. Sometimes a raw photo has more color information than fits in either sRGB or Adobe RGB, so it can be beneficial to edit your photo in Pro Photo RGB because it has more color data. When you are retouching, you are compressing and pushing all the RGB values around in the image. Pro RGB has more colors, more data to manipulate. But when you export a photo, you will always need to convert it to the color space used for the medium you are using. Uh, as RGB for all web uses. If you're using it for a website, putting it on Facebook, sending it in email, whatever, sRGB is your color space. For printing, Adobe RGB for most cases. There are even printers now that can print outside of the Adobe RGB color space. In those cases, Pro Photo RGB is better to work to edit the file because it has more color data. So why don't all professional use Pro Photo RGB. Well, that's simple. There are no monitors on the market today uh, that I know of that that full that, that display full Pro Photo RGB gamut. But you can get a monitor which supports up to 99% of the Adobe RGB uh, gamut. Uh, so you will find most professionals are using Adobe RGB. 
When you print photo, the best practice is to check the website of the company where you want to print your photos. They should have instructions on how they prefer to receive your work for best result. They might even have a color profile that they want you to use for optimal quality. And here's the thing, don't confuse color profile with color space. That's an entirely different thing. A color space is more of a global standard for colors. Uh, for example, all devices connecting to the internet agree on using sRGB color space. So all the screens will show more, and more or less the same color. However, the colors on individual screen can vary considerable. So I, it is recommended that you color correct your monitor if you're gonna edit your photos on that monitor. An ICC profile or a color profile is a, is a file created for a specific device. For example, a specific printer or a screen. Uh, it, is is, it is created within a color space, but it describes how the device captures or renders colors. This can be different from printer to printer and you should always Get this profile from your printer for optimal image quality. One more thing with color you need to be aware of. Every camera has some built-in presets. In Canon it's called picture styles and it has to do with color. Don't confuse that with either color space or color profile. These are just edits, you know, they, they, they edit your photos on the fly. These are like color templates. But you have to know this, if you're shooting JPEG, this cannot be changed. Some, some, uh, some, some, some of these picture styles are very flat, some of them are vivid, some very, very punchy colors. I think uh, Canon has like five profiles or something like that you can choose from. Uh, if you're shooting JPEG, you cannot change it back. So if you, if you assign a color style, and then you assign another color style in post, you're editing the photo again, which essentially reduces the quality and pushes the, co uh, pushes the uh, photo uh, more. So it, it's going to drop in quality. Uh, so you need to know this if you're shooting JPEG. If you're shooting RAW, it really doesn't matter. I usually put on a flat uh, image style because I find that if I see on the back of the camera, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm using a flat profile, I see the, uh, the, the highlights better than the shadow. What, what's happening in the shadows area? It doesn't, it doesn't matter, it's just what I see. But always, never count on what you see. Never trust what you see on the camera screen. Always use the histogram, which we will talk about in another video. So that's the essential you really need to know when you set up your camera. You need to know color space, how big you want your files to be, and what format. I hope this video gives you an idea on how to set this. If you understand nothing of this and you just want to set it right for landscape photography, Go as big as you can, shoot raw, and set it to Adobe RGB, and you're good to go. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.